Hello and welcome to a special bonus episode of GoodCast. Today we'll be catching up with the subject of our most recent Thank You Goodwill video, Michelle Herrera. Michelle had it all, a career, a home, a family, and a great life. One chance encounter with a ghost from her past sent her reeling down a terrible cycle of drug addiction and incarceration that caused her to lose everything. With Goodwill Staffing Services, Faith, and her family, she found redemption. I sat down with Michelle to talk about her experience with the project and what life has been like since the video's release. What made you want to do the Thank You Goodwill video? I can't really say that want was the was the right word because initially I I really didn't have any idea at all what all it entailed. If I would have known everything that it was going to entail, I probably would have thought about it a little bit more because once it happened, I it it kind of was um, whoa. It was it was raw and it was deep and it went back to that place where I was before. And so I would say that it was a little triggering for me at that at that time. Like I, mm -hmm. you know, kind of looking back um, and I had to really um, it, it was actually other people and my family who pulled me kind of out of that. And, and they were so happy for me and so excited for me that it really it really just made me look at it differently. Mm -hmm. um, so I think if anybody is like considering doing it, I would 100 percent advise doing it for sure, because even though I was I was a little blown away how it all unfolded and what all it entailed, it ended up being such a positive thing. Well, it's a, it's an intimidating process, right? Not just from like, yes. the, oh, I'm camera shy type thing, but like you were talking mm -hmm. about, like having to relive some of those moments from your life that are very harmful and, and yeah. you know, can be painful to look back on. So I'm really glad that you had that like support network. And I know they interviewed like your mom and your sons. Mm -hmm. um, what was their reaction when you told them about it? Well, they were super excited. I mean, they were, they were acting like I was going to be on like a Netflix movie or something. <laughs> like they thought it was so cool. And I, and I was like trying to explain to them, you know, it's a really quick thing. And my daughters, um, and I have, you know, I have six children. So my daughters were in California and were not able to be a part of it. And they were so upset and disappointed that they weren't able to be in the film, but they were, you know, my daughter is, um, in her second year at UCLA this year. And she was, you know, quite busy last year. And, and my other daughter was just wrapping up college. And so, weren't able to come it was kind of um you know last minute notice by the time we agreed to a filming date but um but I got a really overwhelming positive response from all my children I mean they I mean literally I couldn't I couldn't be blessed with a stronger more supportive family I mean everything that we have been through they have literally taken our struggles and turned it around for their good and it is it's amazing to see, you know, how they have propelled themselves forward and how they have encouraged me to propel forward, you know, taking what what my struggles were and turning them into something positive. So um, it's just been it's great all the way around. I had my mom, my uh, two of my aunts. I had uh, my sister. I had um my kids, uh, my one of my daughters was able to come from California at, for the screening, and um, and then of course my sons, and so yeah, it was it was awesome, it was great. And, oh, and the lady who um who she's my cousin, but she is the one who sold me my house like two years ago, and so that was a whole thing in itself because you know when I started the Goodwill program, my credit score was like, I don't even think it was 400 at the time. And I was just starting to try to get back into the workforce, to, uh, workforce at that time. And, um, and so, yeah, it was, it was a little crazy. Um, because she, when she first started trying to help me and I started saving for a house, I mean, we were looking at houses that didn't even have floors or walls. I mean, the ones in my price range were so dilapidated. <laughs> And so after uh, after four years of like working and saving money, 
And, you know, she was just getting her real estate license. And mine was like literally one of the first houses she sold. Um, I think the first one was to her husband. They He bought a second property and then I was the second one. So she went through that whole journey with me. And that was pretty amazing in itself that, um, you know, she was able to be there too. So I was super happy about that. What was it like seeing that final product on screen? I mean, like I said, because it went all the way back, right? And I'm the one who provided them with all the pictures and stuff. And I and I did provide them my mugshots, which which I did that really because because I wanted them to see how far I had come, right? And so, but you know, when you when when she's asking for photos and stuff, you're not really thinking that, oh my gosh, they're gonna turn up in this film that the whole, you know, anybody can see, right? Mm -hmm. And so um after I did that and then I saw it in the film, I was like, oh my gosh, no, I can't show this to anybody, you know, because I mean, nobody at, at my job knows my past. I mean, except for, of course, the, the lady who hired me, who offered me a position, I shared my story with her because obviously they have to overcome my background. They have to approve mm -hmm. it in order to get me on with TechScot, right? So I had to be, you know, pretty candid and open and honest with her. Um, but other than that, as far as my coworkers and, you know, nobody knows about us except HR and my current, you know, my current boss. Mm -hmm. So, um, when I, you know, when I was working through Goodwill, I didn't have to share, you know, I wasn't getting hired through the state, so I didn't have to share any of that with them for the three years that I was with Goodwill. So it was, it was a little, um, it was like reopening a wound, really mm -hmm. seeing that. But I really don't believe that it would have had the same effect had that not been in there, had that had had it not gone back there, you know, because because it's I mean, this that's a community that we're serving. That's a community that Goodwill is trying to reach. And it and it's brutal and it's and it's it's out there and it's like you know, if you're going to transform a life, then you want to see, you know, where that transformation grew from. And so I'm, I'm very, very, very glad that, that it was, you know, uh, portrayed in the way that it was, because that is the truth. And that is, and, and, and really, I mean, it was what, only four or five minutes long. I can't even remember, but I mean, oh my gosh, I mean, there's so much more that it didn't include, you know? And so, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm, I looking back at it now, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that, um, that they went back the way they did. Yeah. And, and I will say that it's not too uncommon for those fears to come up. Like, you know, we've had a couple of like internal success stories last year. Um, we had Beth who's head of our donated goods department. And she was like, I have never told my coworkers some of these details. And so like, that's, that's scary to, because there's such a stigma attached to it. Have you shared it with other people outside of your family? No, I haven't really. Um, I mean, I know people have seen it because I, you know, I, okay. So I went in a Goodwill store not too long after the premiere of the movie. And I saw a bunch of the little, like, uh, they're, they were like, um, business cards that were up at the counter that, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and so I grabbed a whole stack of them and I, you know, brought them back to the office and I set them on my desk. And so I know people have grabbed them, you know, I mean, I know because people come and they're like, oh, my gosh, what's this, you know? And mm -hmm. um, and so uh, for sure, you know, I know they have now I have not personally had anybody say anything to me. But like, like there's certain people who've had um who've had a part in my journey. Like for instance, the lady who does my hair, um, when I met her, she was doing hair for free for women that were, you know, rescued, um, you know, and so I, I was in this group through my church that was like a program, it's called the butterfly program where they take women who, you know, who've been on drugs, a whole number of things. So they take, women who've been in the, in those places. And then they put them through this transformation process for like, um, they, they call it the butterfly program. And you basically go from, you know, the caterpillar, the cocoon to the butterfly. And you go through this, like about two years. And, um, and I went through that program and you get a mentor and they help guide you spiritually. Um, they give you access to free therapy and lots of self-care, um, you know, benefits. And so one of those was hair. And so this lady volunteered her time and she would do my hair for free. And she did a lot of the women in the program. 
And so as I continue on my journey, you know, obviously I was able to start paying her to do my hair. And so she still does my hair. And so, you know, I, when I went, she wasn't able to attend the screening, but when I went back to get my hair done, I shared it with, shared the video with her. And mm -hmm. she was like, she had no idea that I had been through all that. She had no idea the community she was serving. Like she thought she was just doing a good thing, like volunteering her services to help people in need. Like she had no idea the, the depths of despair that these people had been in myself included, you know? And so, um, so it was, it was awesome to be able to see, um, you know, someone like that who had played a part in it to actually mm -hmm. go back and realize what an impact they had made in my life. You know, it was something so small, such a small gesture, but it was instrumental in giving me my confidence back and my self-esteem back, you know, looking mm -hmm. good and feeling good about myself. So, yeah. Uh, so she's a person and there have been, you know, other people too that, you know, played that part in my life that I've, I've shared it with and they, um, and they have been, you know, overwhelmingly supportive. So the, the last thing I kind of want to touch on is that, uh, with these most recent thank you, goodwill videos, we attach a, a word to them. Um, so we've had like independence and, you know, stuff like that. The, mm -hmm. the word for your video was redeemed. And I think you also talk about, you know, sort of redemption uh, in your interview. Um, what does that look like to you or what does redemption mean to you? So that word is, I mean, literally sums up my life in, in one word and, and I didn't pick it, which is, which is crazy. <laughs> so it is, um, you know, when you, you know, drug addiction and, um, you know, nobody, nobody really understands, you know, addicts, except, you know, I don't even think the addict understands why they choose what they choose, you know, to use drugs. Um, for me, I think I thought that I had been on cruise control most of my life and that what happened to me, I didn't realize that it had affected me the way it had. And I went through my whole life, not ever using drugs or alcohol until I got, you know, close to my forties. And then all of a sudden, one day I run into the man who, who had, you know, abused me and it sent me back, you know, 25 years. And I, you know, used drugs the first time that day. And I literally was at the top of what I thought was my life at that time. I mean, I was, you know, driving a Mercedes. I had a beautiful home in Colleyville. My kids were in great schools. I had everything you could imagine. And I literally lost it all because of drugs. I mean, in a matter of months, it was just gone. I mean, everything was just, my whole life fell apart. And so I, I think the hardest part for all of that, when, when I came back, when I finally did get sober in 2017, it was February 28th, 2017. And when I finally did get sober, the worst part about all of it was that I knew God forgave me. I believed in God and I believed in his grace and I knew that he forgave me, but I could not forgive myself. I could not even look at my children at times. I felt so ashamed of, of how I had gotten, you know, my life to a point where I was in such despair. And I literally felt like I could not get out of that. And so every night when I would lay down and go to sleep, I couldn't even sleep because the thoughts were racing through my head of all the mistakes I had made and all the things I had done. And I could not pull myself out of it. And literally when I say that goodwill came in and literally brought me that self-redemption. Now, I'm not talking about the kind of redeem that God gives you because that's free and you don't have to work for that. And that is, you know, there. But to redeem yourself and to pull yourself up takes a village. I mean, it's more than just yourself. And it takes somebody coming in and believing in you and not judging you and taking you from that depth of despair to redeeming your life and giving you back the quality of life that you not even once had, but better than you once had. Because the life that I had back then when I was, you know, making good money and having everything, I was not healed within myself. And so it was all a facade and, it, and I didn't realize how fragile I was and how I could be knocked off of that so easily, which I was. And so for Goodwill to come in and help me redeem myself and help me redeem my self-esteem and help me redeem my self-worth, I mean, in hand in hand with God, 
I mean, that word could not have summed it up better. And they chose it. And that was the most fitting word that I could have ever thought of, because that's exactly how I felt about what the Goodwill program did for me. They redeemed me. And now you're free to like actually start the life that you want and that your family wants and, and needs. Right. In a healthy way. You know, mm-hmm. like I've, I've, you know, when I say I, I ran into that same man that threw me into drug addiction, you know, way back when I ran into him at a funeral a couple of years ago and I was terrified initially going in thinking that, oh my gosh, what if seeing him puts me back there all over again. But you know what? I already knew that I had the strength and the power to overcome that. And seeing him was just like, you know, I forgive you. I forgive you because without you and without what you did to me in my life, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I I honestly wouldn't have reached the people that I have reached. I mean, I have inspired not just people and friends and people in my community and in my church, but my own children. I mean, my daughter was able to use our story to be able to give her that edge to get into UCLA. I mean, UCLA is one of the hardest universities to get into in the country. I mean, you know, it's 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 so small and it's they literally are so selective. And, you know, even though, yes, she had the grades and she had everything, she was still one of a million. And I really believe that her story, our story is what helped her. And so I look at them and I look at how they've turned our tragedy into such a beautiful blessing in our lives. And I am just so, I, I, I just feel so great. I feel, I just feel so blessed. I want to say thank you, one, for doing the Thank You Goodwill video and two, just kind of chatting with me here today. Um, and thank you for inspiring people with your story, seeing the result of that in your community is such a a great thing that it's just really appreciated. Thank you so much. I mean, really, thank you. And I mean, again, I just, I can't say enough how grateful I am for the Goodwill program and how I would encourage anybody who's, who's on the fence about thinking about doing this to please, 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 you have no idea how freeing it is and how much it really does inspire people. I mean, the day we had the screening and I turned around and I saw members of my family crying and I was like, wow, I had no idea that it touched them that way. I I didn't, I really didn't. I mean, these are, this is like my sister who had disowned me for years while I was using drugs. And I don't think she really even understood how I had gotten there and what had, what had traumatized me because my life wasn't anything like hers. You know, she was born, you know, years after, you know, that time. And so It's just, um, you know, I just want to use this time to encourage anybody else who's who's thinking about it to please do it because you have no idea how much it blesses someone else's life. Thank you once again to Michelle for chatting with me and thank you all for listening. If you're interested in seeing Michelle's full story and other success stories, you can go to thankyougoodwill.org. We'll see you in the next episode.